I recently had an opportunity to visit a number of the ships and bases attached to this command. At that time, I met and spoke with many of you who are serving with the United States Naval Forces in Europe. I wish it could have been all of you. Since it could not, I am taking this means of talking to you a little bit about why we are all here. This command inevitably lacks the tight-knit unity of a single ship or even of a fleet. We are scattered widely, some of us afloat, some at bases, some at distant administrative centers. Some of us have spent a lifetime in the Navy, others but a few months. Some are veterans of hard-fought battles on far-off beaches. Some have yet to hear a single shot fired in action. Yet we have our own kind of unity. Young or old, veteran or recruit, shipborn, airborne or shoreborn, we have one thing in common. We are all taking part in one of the greatest military ventures of all time. For as I need scarcely tell you, we are approaching the climax of this war, the invasion of Europe. And in that invasion, the United States Navy will be right in the thick of it. When the day comes, each of us will have a share. I know that it's a bit hard for some of you to realize this. There are a lot of dull jobs in the Navy, and it's easy to get restless from time to time and to think they're not important. But if you think that, you're wrong. Every job is important. Never forget that the Navy is first a collection of individuals doing their jobs. Seamen, radio men, firemen, boilermakers, storekeepers, pharmacists, mates, yeomen, aviation specialists, bosuns, carpenters, mates, CBs, in fact, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. I cannot name you all, but you know the list as well as I do. All of you combined make the team. I am particularly proud of the fact that a large part of this command is composed of men and ships of the amphibious forces. You amphibians have inherited the oldest tradition of sea warfare. Those tough old Greeks who ran their ships up on the beach at Troy were amphibians. So were the Viking sea rovers who fought on every coast of Europe and who crossed the Atlantic in their small craft. You are a new element in our Navy, a product of the conditions brought about by this war. But you have already established a record for technical skill, seamanship, and bravery, which equals that of any other branch of the service. When the history of this war comes to be written, you of the amphibious forces are going to take up some of the brightest chapters in the book. I am also particularly pleased at the way in which all hands have upheld the highest standards of the Navy in your conduct at this trying time. You have shown that you realize each of you is being judged over here as the representative of our country. I know that many of you have made warm friendships. We can have no finer asset than an understanding of our allies and their problems. We fight side by side. It is essential to our success that we act together with one mind, one heart, and one soul. Our people at home and our allies abroad alike look to us for victory. Our children and our children's children will remember this as one of the great battles in man's fight for freedom. They will be proud that their family had a man to play a man's part at this crucial moment. To each of you belongs the heritage of the brave men who made our Navy great in the past. To each of you belongs the privilege of adding fresh glory to that heritage. Good luck, and God bless you. Thank you.